there's a rumor going around. If you like this video and subscribe you will be able to unlock all 8 inner gates. Hi guys this is the next part of. What if Brawly was reincarnated in the world of Naruto I hope you enjoy. If you work hard enough, I don't see why not. Brawly responds with a grin that screamed I would love it if you have enough guts to try mastering multiple branches. Do, you think I could try for multiple branches to Aomatsuna sama Jabi asked nervously and unsure. To this question Brawly just grinned again. Tell me what you two are interested in while we walk to training ground 44. I need to see what you're capable of before I get a training plan for you too. Aomatsuna-kun, I would like to learn Kenjutsu and Ninjutsu. Esumi requests. Brawly just nods while looking towards Jabi. I don't like to fight that much, but I'm thinking of medical ninjutsu and genjutsu. When Brawly heard this response, he grabbed Jabi's shoulders causing the bones in his shoulders to creak and the person himself to almost faint from the pain. Ahahaha you're gonna become a fantastic slave once I'm done with you. The capabilities of a medical ninja are particularly devious, and if you add the ability to change a person's insides and out with the combination of both genjutsu and medical ninjutsu, you're gonna be even worse than me and her on the battlefield. Brawly lets go of Jabi while smiling his signature smile and this causes Jabi to nearly fall and melt into a puddle on the ground. Oh no, Jabi responds disoriented and painfully. After Jabi gets up and continues to walk with Brawly and Esumi to the forest of death, a particular set of eyes began to watch them as they sneak inside the forest as three civilian children that haven't even been admitted to the academy. The person watching them was about to stop them until, a person with a dog mask stopped her and told them to continue watching and only intervene if their lives are at stake. I need to find out why Aomatsuna brought these two untrained ordinary civilians to this dangerous place that even Chunins can die in. A person three ranks ahead of all three of them. You know I'm only listening to you because you're so handsome right? The mesh armor coat wearing female says. Help me watch out for anything that happens with these three. The dog mask shinobi says unaffected by the compliment. Only if you go on a date with me later tonight. If not, I might just watch the brats die for their stupidity by accident, who knows what could possibly claim their lives in this forest, besides the person who spends a majority of her time here and knows everything about it. The seductively dressed female shinobi says slowly. Fine, but no dangos. The dog face wearing ninja responds slightly unwillingly. Aha no take backs Kakashi-san. The woman cheers. Brawly and his two new, friends, arrive into an empty clearing in the forest surrounded by huge trees. Brawly smiles at his two new slaves and is excited about the possibility of them becoming even a threat to himself and fighting them both in the future. His legendary Saiyan blood is boiling at the thought of it causing his smile to look particularly terrifying to his two new, friends, and causing them to shiver at the knees due to the uncontrolled bloodlust and battle spirit being directed at them. Come at me, try to kill me or suffer the consequences of not listening to your new master. Brawly demands. Esumi is still shivering but looks at Brawly resolutely and starts to straighten herself. Jabi looks at Esumi's determination while still shivering moves into position to assist her. They both run at Brawly with Jabi leading. Jabi runs with his arms stretched out towards Brawly while Esumi is running on the side of him. Brawly decides to indulge Jabi's tactic and stretches his arms out also meeting with Jabi's hands. Jabi attempts to push Brawly backwards but finds no success. Since pushing didn't work he decides to pull and lift. While he is attempting this Esumi sneaks by Jabi and tries to kick Brawly in the chin by jumping with her right leg at his chin. Brawly smirks and easily moves his head to the side. Jabi notices Brawly looking away and breaks away from the grip he had with Brawly and tries to get under him and lift him in the air. Only to notice a knee heading right to his face. Esumi recovers from her previous failed attack and tries the same tactic again but aiming for the knee that's about to cave in Jabi's face. Brawly grins and changes his knee's direction and smashes it into Esumi's gut. Knocking her into a tree far away and unconscious. Jabi's face turned into fear and concern and a little bit of anger. If I don't do everything I can to survive I'm gonna be destroyed like Esumi. Brawly noticed this show of emotion on his face and grins at him as if mocking him and asking him, what are you going to do? Jabi yells at the top of his lungs and cocks his arm back and thrusts it towards Brawly's face. Brawly shows no hint of dodging and in fact just turns his devilish grin into an excited smile. Jabi's fist lands directly on Brawly's cheek and a hard impact crashes into his chest at the same time. I, hit, you, Jabi says with a smile briefly and then fainting like Esumi. 
Brawly just starts to laugh after he falls, scaring and alerting any creatures nearby with his fighting spirit screaming out towards anything nearby. Satisfactory. You two showed a fantastic amount of potential, even for weaklings with no training. That old man will definitely let me enroll by next year. I can't get stronger without any fights that push me to my limit. And the first step towards more strength is becoming a shinobi. The two people hiding in the shadows watched over everything that just happened in shock. I have to report this to the Hokage. Kakashi states in slight disbelief at this child's strength and fighting potential. Wow that brat is something special. You don't even see the type of skill from a genin who's been training for a year with a team, the trench coat mesh armor wearing young woman says in praise. Exactly. Where did he learn to fight like that without any type of training whatsoever Anko? Kakashi wonders. Maybe it's because of his bloodline. It's instinctive for him possibly. Anko guesses. How did you know he had a Keke Genkai? Kakashi questions. Not everyone has a freaking tail sporting from above their butt cheeks. Anko yells obviously. Kakashi just sighs and watches as Brawly takes Jabi and Esumi over his shoulders and out of the forest back to the orphanage. Once they arrive back at the orphanage Kakashi heads over to the Hokage Tower to report his findings to the Hokage. Hokage-sama I have something to report about Aomatsu no Hakuse. The mask-wearing Anbu says. Oh ho ho did he already lose out on the bet we made. I can't wait to rub it in. Hiruzen says a little giddy. Well no actually. He already completed one, while showing a great start on another one. Oh, even better. Tell me which ones. Hiruzen says with a smile. He has found two friends and he has started to smile more. Kakashi answers. Great. Now what did you want to report to me about? Well it seems that Aomatsuna is very skilled in taijutsu without being trained by anyone or being seen training in taijutsu by any anbu who watch him daily. I believe that his bloodline gives him better senses than that of a normal person. So due to these enhanced senses, his body is able to do more than what should be capable of a five-year-old, even that of a genius or prodigy. So, along with these enhanced senses I just stated he also has abnormal chakra network, his strong body, and his prehensile tail with no known information about except that it can hold grab and exert force that's similar to a normal hand. Kakashi reports. It seems that we will have quite the monster on our hands if he becomes a shinobi. We need to find a way to give him bonds to the village, so he won't just leave when he becomes stronger and decides he doesn't need the village to get any stronger. Hiruzen states. I don't believe those two friends he made are of any real stature in the village are they? To this question Kakashi just shakes his head a little sadly. They are also orphans just like Aomatsuna. One is a girl named Yada Esumi who was taken to the orphanage not too long ago due to being found in one of Orochimaru's hideouts after we raided it with a squad of Anbu. She lost her mother and brother to Orochimaru's men and has set her sights on the Sanin himself to get revenge for her dead family. She is particularly withdrawn from the other children and when approached by a child of similar age, she will either stare at them coldly or tell them to go away causing her to become rather antisocial and unapproachable by her peers. Orochimaru still causes problems for me even when he's gone. I should have taken responsibility as his sensei and taken him out myself to prevent even further damage he could have caused. But that ship has sailed, Hiruzen starts to smoke on his pipe and motions for Kakashi to continue his report. The second friend of his is named Amaijabi. He has been in the orphanage as long as Aomatsuna has. He has no remarkable traits. He was often bullied by three other children in the orphanage, but it has never gotten to where blood was spilled just a little rough housing. He is cowardly, reserved about his thoughts, and kind. So three orphans with no real attachments to the village at all and from what Aomatsuna kun shows me in his behavior, he only cares about getting stronger for no discernible reason. Hiruzen's face takes on a grim look. Is there any way we can introduce Aomatsuna kun to the clan head heirs and somehow make them gain bonds over time? Kakashi looks at Hiruzen with a frown. Hiruzen takes another smoke before sighing deeply and blowing smoke in the wind. Aomatsuna does not show the initiative to want to associate with children his age. He looks at them as they are under him and not worth being seen as equals or treated as such. Maybe when he gets into the academy or on a genin team in the future we could perhaps cause situations that force him to interact with the clan heirs on positive terms. But for now when the children have no reason to better themselves and look for reasons other than to play with their friends, it's rather impossible to help Aomatsuna gain bonds to the village for now. Kakashi states. Hearing this just made Hiruzen's face turn even more sour. Alright. For now, continue to watch over him and his friends. 
Keep them safe and make sure they aren't doing anything too dangerous. Kakashi nods and then disappears in a swirl of leaves. God damn it, who's gonna clean up those leaves? Hiruzen swears before calling in his secretary. Somewhere else, any more news on the boy? Yes, my lord, it appears that the child has made friends and decided to train with them to fulfill some sort of bet. What this bet is I couldn't find out. I just know it involved getting two people close to him. Is there anything else you managed to find out? Yes, it turns out the child is very talented in the field of taijutsu. He was able to take on two of his peers in a friendly spar with no trouble whatsoever. I was not able to find out exactly how talented he was due to the spar being too quick. Maybe a test is in order. Send some of the recent recruits we acquired to test him when he's alone and out of sight. Tell me of the results. You're dismissed. Yes, Lord Danzo. The faceless mask shinobi disappears. I will find out whether you will be a threat to this village or not Aomatsuna Hakusei. And if you are, I will immediately get rid of you. The next day Brawley is walking towards the local weapons shop to look for a weapon for Esumi. He was about to walk in but is stopped by a man. Get out of here you demon. You're not welcome here. The man says viciously. Brawley stares at the man before remembering his deal with the old man about not injuring anyone severely. Brawley's face turns dark. Get out of my sight before I crush you under my foot like the other three idiots that attempted to get in my way. Brawley says as a warning. The man slightly panics before looking at a dark alleyway and then looking back towards Brawley. This did not go unnoticed by Brawley. I'm. I'm not like those drunk fools. The man takes out a knife and points it at Brawley. Brawley's face turns even more frightening, causing killing intent to leak out and flow towards the man. Making him shiver and look nervous while still holding the knife. He looks towards the alley once again and then calms down a bit. Whoever put you up to this will regret messing with me at this time. Although I need to get into the academy as soon as possible, I believe this battle with these trash will be satisfying for my Saiyan blood. Brawley laughs before roaring and charging the armed man. The man shook in fright before holding the knife in front of him and attempting to slash at Brawley. Brawley moved his head to the side and grabbed the man's wrist and, crack. A limp hand falls useless along with a knife that drops to the ground. The man yelled in pain before trying to run away towards the alleyway. Don't you run worm, I'm not finished with you yet, Brawley shouts while easily catching up to the man and smashing his left leg with both of his feet causing another crack to ring out for anyone in earshot. The man falls on the floor crying and crawling towards the alleyway while screaming, help me from this monster, another crack rings out. Brawley stomped on the man's other leg causing him to shriek in pain and then faint. TCH. Useless. Spineless coward. Brawley says in disappointment. He turns his head towards the alleyway and grins. Come out insects, unless you want me to come and skin your hides myself. Brawley commands. Three young teenagers in faceless masks come out together. One boy with purple hair was holding a katana blade behind his back, the second one was large in size while cracking his knuckles, the third was a girl with black hair. They looked towards each other and then Brawley and dashed towards him. Brawley laughed in excitement towards this battle. He rushed towards the biggest of the three faceless masked members. The large boy and Brawley clashed fists. The large boy was surprised and angry at the fact that this boy shorter than him was able to push him back and actually give him a challenge. While Brawley was pushing the large boy backwards in strength the sword-wielding boy appeared by Brawley's side and attempted to thrust his sword through Brawley's ribs. Brawley quickly broke off the clash between him and the large boy and shoved his foot towards the sword-wielder's chest. The swordsman quickly gave up on attempting to pierce through Brawley's unprotected chest and dodged the kick. The girl quickly weaved through some hand signs and said, Demonic illusion hell viewing technique. Brawley felt something invisible enter his body then quickly wash away as if it was never there. So that's what a genjutsu feels like. I suppose this bug is too weak to make me experience what it feels like to be truly put under a genjutsu. When the genjutsu was broken, it caused the caster to shout out in surprise. My genjutsu doesn't work against him. Then take out your tanto, small katana, to help us. She does as the sword wielding boy says and charges with him towards Brawley. Brawley leaked out some more killing intent and battle spirit towards the three, causing them to frown and take this even more seriously. The black-haired girl slashed towards Brawley's face. Brawley dodged as she continued her assault. The purple-haired swordsman slashed towards Brawley's ankle. Brawley jumped in the air only to see the large-haired boy finish weaving through some hand signs and saying, Earth-style, stone pistol jutsu. 
Raleigh smiled a little bit more as a rock the size of a pebble suddenly increased to the size of a rubber ball as it shot through the air towards him. While the impending rock was coming toward Brawley, the two sword wielders jumped towards Brawley's back while he was still falling down and aimed their swords towards his exposed back. Ha 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 this is a fight. Brawley laughs manically while smashing the rock towards the purple haired katana wielder and then diving foot first towards the girl. He couldn't be planning on taking a sword through the chest just to get to me could he? He's not that crazy as he. She looks at his face and sees a smile that says he's planning to cause as much pain as possible to her. She quickly shifts to a defensive position while in the air to tank the kick with her blade. The large boy was helping the purple-haired boy by taking the rock off of his chest. He noticed that he fainted and scowled deeply. He looked up and noticed Brawley and the girl were about to clash foot to sword in the air. He took off as fast as he could while weaving through hand signs. Earth style. Earth flow wave. Suddenly a wave of earth appeared under the large boy and sped him up towards Brawley and his partner. He realized he wouldn't be able to make it in time to stop the clash, so he went through some more hand signs and yelled, Earth style, stone pistol jutsu, and shot it towards his partner. Brawley and the girl clashed and her tanto was broken on contact with Brawley's foot. Brawley's foot was continuing to crash towards her stomach but suddenly the girl was knocked out of the way by a bowling ball-sized rock crashing into her arm and the side of her ribs. Brawley continued to dive towards the ground without a target to smash into now. Boom a large cloud of dust rose as he landed. The large boy holding the purple hair katana wielder and the girl reconvened and looked at each other and then looked at Brawley. He's a monster. The girl says frightened. The boy's face behind the mask turned grim. We have to retreat. This mission is a failure. Let's go. They took off leaving behind the civilian man with his legs and wrist broken. You cowards. At least fight me until I'm done playing around. I will find you insects and crush you all. Brawley roared while a green aura clad over him. If the previous noise didn't alert the surroundings of anything was going on this shout certainly did because as soon as the shout finished three Anbu came and surrounded Brawley. Aomatsuna. Let's calm down and talk about what is going on. The dog masked Anbu man said. Are you my appetizer? Those three weaklings didn't even satisfy me as a drink. It's time for more fighting. The green aura surrounding Brawley grew even denser. The three Anbu looked at each other with increasing worry. They didn't want to take down the boy forcefully because these three have been watching the boy since he grew up. Brawley barely took notice of this as he charged the one he sensed as the strongest. The dog masked man. Brawley swung towards the dog masked guy with a grin. Kakashi, dog masked guy, deflected the young Saiyan blow towards the ground making him miss and crack the ground slightly. Brawley swung upward with his other fist and Kakashi grabbed his arm and pushed him to the ground while holding both of his arms behind his back. Fight me cowards. Give me a battle that makes my blood boil. Kakashi sighed and took out his kanai and used the butt of it to smash it against Brawley's head. Knocking him out and dispersing the green aura surrounding him. Well that was, something. The cat masked Anbu said. Well we definitely have to take him, that passed out guy with a couple broken limbs, and report this to the Hokage immediately. The boar masked Anbu said. Let's go. Kakashi slung Brawley over his shoulder and they body flickered away towards the Hokage tower. After being explained what happened. I see. Although he was attacked first, I know he could have easily run away from the civilian. Hirazan looked at the passed out child with a sad smile. It appears that the name of the man is Mukai Tatamaiki. He has no family, no job, no real relations with anyone around him except those at a pub he frequently visits, and even those aren't much. He couldn't have wanted to attack Aomatsuna kun for no reason. Someone either offered him something for this or forced him to. Aomatsuna kun isn't like Naruto where people place their misplaced hatred on an innocent child. He hasn't killed anyone. Hiruzen's face turns dark as he thinks about the fate of the two boys. While the Hokage is pondering about this, Brawley wakes up slowly. He looks around and notices the Hokage and the dog masked man. Old man I've failed my side of the deal. I'll wait the three years to enroll in the academy. Brawley says with a strange calmness. Very well Aomatsuna-kun. I need to ask you about what happened to you. Go on ask away. Brawley says in an unrespecting tone. Can you tell me of everything that happened to you? Brawley looks at the dog mask wearing man with a certain gleam in his eyes but then looks back at the Hokage and nods. Explaining what happened. It sounds like Danzo is still running root behind your back Hokage-sama. We don't use faceless Anbu mask anymore. Kakashi says slightly upset. The Hokage face turns sour. 
it looks like I need to have a word with Danzo about doing things behind the Hokage's back. Hokage-sama won't Danzo just deny any involvement in this situation? We will need to gain evidence in order to go against him. With the civilian council being against Aomatsuna due to his behavior and unknown lineage, I don't think we should make our move right now. Yes. You're right Inu-san, he calls him this because Brawley is still in the room. Hiruzen takes out his pipe and lights it before breathing in deeply and breathing out the smoke. Alright Inu-san you're dismissed. Kakashi disappears but this time without the leaves. What did you want to talk about old man? Brawley says, why do you have a craving for fighting? Hiruzen asks with a rare but serious face. It's in my blood. My, Keke Genkai, drives me towards fighting. Brawley answers. Is it a feeling you get? Or is it like a voice telling you to fight, there is only my voice. No one will control me. I like to fight old man and I will continue to fight till my dying breath or I run out of people to fight. Brawley answers with the determination that doesn't seem like that of one of a five year old. I see. Well Aomatsuna-kun please try to avoid fighting as much as you can till you are a genin. And by this I mean against people who are weaker than you physically. If you can't do that then reduce the damage you cause them. I can't protect you forever Aomatsuna-kun. If you keep injuring civilians the civilian council will force me to do something I'd really rather not do. I don't know how much you're able to control yourself before you have this craving for a fight, but if it ever gets to where you need to fight or you're going to go crazy. Come to me. Or Inu-san. I like you boy. It crushes me to have to restrict your nature, but it would crush me even more if I had to treat you like some sort of animal by the council. You're dismissed. Brawley starts to walk towards the door but then turns back and says, I may not like this, but you have my thanks old man. For treating me like I matter and not forcing anything upon me. Goodbye. Brawley walks out the door and heads towards the orphanage while deep in thought. Three years is quite a while to train me and my slaves. And even then I have to wait four more years to become a genin and officially start my shinobi career. By then I will truly be able to embrace my Saiyan blood and genes. So, for now I will have to control myself and hone my body and mind. If I can't even wait how could I possibly reach the peak as a devil? As a Saiyan, something more than a weak insect. Brawley reached the orphanage while he was thinking of all this and was greeted by his two, friends, at the door. Welcome back Aomatsuna-kun. How was your day? Esumi asks with a slight smile. Brawley looked at both of his slaves. Tiring. I'm going to bed. Be prepared for training tomorrow. After Brawley said this, both Esumi and Javi shivered in remembering the pain they still felt from yesterday. Three years later it was a nice sunny day in Konoha. The birds are chirping, people are socializing, and ninjas are ninjing around. But suddenly a loud voice was heard in the peaceful village coming from an infamous orphanage known to have hosted two demons, the cruel monkey demon and the demon fox. Although the demon fox was kicked out of the orphanage a year ago and given his own place to live due to the Hokage learning of the neglect he was receiving from the workers at the orphanage, the monkey demon was still living there along with his two new trouble-making friends. They have also earned themselves a name for hanging around the tail demon for so long without being mysteriously gone from the public sights like a majority of people who hung around the demon. The petite fierce blue-haired girl is called Tiny Demoness for her vicious nature when dealing with people other than the tail demon and the other one who hung out with them. They call the chubby boy demon of gentleness. Many would think that because of how innocent and non-threatening he looks he would be the least likely to be called a demon of any sort, but don't let his kind stature and physique trick you. His true nature is that similar to the tail demon himself. It was said that one time, Three older children decided to mess with him because they didn't like how the tailed demon acted and they knew they couldn't hurt him, so they chose to mess with the least dangerous looking person closest to him. They found the gentle demon alone in an alleyway when he was just coming from a food stand and pounced together. What happened in that alleyway is unknown. All that is known from the altercation was that the three boys were sent to the hospital and they never been the same ever since. But back to the story. Suna-kun have you got everything ready for the academy today? A loud loving voice shouts to a blank-faced boy in another room. The boy sighs and gets his book bag with all the supplies he needs for the academy inside and walks towards the woman's voice. Akira. You don't need to yell. I have everything I would need and more. Brawley responds with lackluster. Okay I'm just making sure my little troublemaker has everything he needs before he finally leaves me all alone and starts to live by himself like a big boy. Akira says with joking sadness. I will be sure to visit you when I can. I do have to thank you for raising me all this time the way you have. 
I don't consider you an insect. Brawly thanks in the best way he can. Akira's face turns into a huge smile and she bum rushes Brawly and hugs him while rubbing her face against his. I love you too Suna-kun. You also mean the world to me. Akira smiles as she understands what the young Saiyan meant due to raising him for 8 years. Now go on and don't be late for school. She waves goodbye towards Brawly and his friends. Esumi and Jabi are at the door waiting for Brawly and wave back at Akira while following Brawly out the door. I can't wait for the first day at the academy. I wonder if we're gonna learn any interesting things that we can use. Maybe they'll teach us about chakra or jutsus. Jabi says excitedly and completely unlike his shy-like nature from three years ago. No way you dork, like they'll teach us anything interesting on the first day of school. It's probably just gonna be rules this, rules that, then a history lesson on how the village got created or something. Esumi says, no way. Why would they teach something so boring on the first day? If you really want children to pay attention to you, you have to catch their interests. If they aren't interested why would they listen? Jabi asks logically, who said the teachers or the academy even know how to teach children? Maybe they have just been getting lucky all these years. Esumi says rather pessimistically, okay let's make a bet. I bet that they will teach something interesting on the first day and if I'm right you have to pay for the weights Aomatsuna-sama wants us to get after school. Jabi grinned, fine lard ass, and if you lose you have to pay for the new sword I've been wanting. You're on midget. After saying this Esumi slashed towards Jabi abruptly. Jabi easily dodged by swaying his still roundish body to the side and then running towards the academy while laughing. Esumi quickly chased after the surprisingly speedy heavy set boy to unleash her anger upon being insulted about her height. If the two children were to turn around they would notice that Brawly had the smallest hint of a smile on his face as he continued walking at his own pace towards the academy. Jabi was the first to reach the classroom and meet the faces of his new classmates and peers. As soon as he saw the number of people inside the room his entire behavior changed. When this happened Esumi also arrived inside the room and took notice of this. Still haven't changed that much from when we were little, ya big ol shy guy. Esumi says while sheathing her sword back in the holder. Sit in the top back row in the middle. If anyone is there tell them to move. Brawly says to Esumi and Jabi. Esumi and Jabi headed to where Brawly said and noticed there were three civilian kids chatting and socializing. As they were talking, Esumi smashed her foot on the desk creating a loud bang and bringing everyone's attention towards them. Get out of the seats or take a trip towards the infirmary on the first day of class. Esumi said with a threatening aura not befitting someone of her physique and voice. The three kids were about to leave due to the frightening aura she was emitting but then took a second look at her appearance. One of the kids with sunglasses snorted. Oh yeah and what are you gonna do if we don't pipsqueak? After this sentence was said, Jabi appeared next to said kid and quickly shoved him out of his seat, just in time to avoid Esumi's fist smashing into his face can. We. Not cause altercations. With our new classmates. On the first day. Jabi asked softly. To this question Esumi just snorted and stared at the two remaining kids still sitting in the seats. They quickly got out of the seats and moved elsewhere. Brawly, Esumi, and Jabi all sat in the three seats in silence while it seemed to the other students that they were projecting an aura that was shouting, I dare you to say something. The students quickly got to gossiping about the three while someone came towards the three. A boy wearing a grey jacket with red markings on his face and a white puppy on top of his head stared at them. I don't know where you guys came from but there's something you need to know about this classroom. And that thing is that I'm gonna be the alpha in here. There is only room for one alpha male in this classroom and that is gonna be me. The boy declared boldly and arrogantly. Brawly dismissed the boy and took out a book from his book bag with the title, Taijutsu Styles and Kenjutsu Styles of Konoha. The round-bellied boy followed Brawly's example and also took out a book that was titled, Herbs and Medicines of Konoha. Esumi stared at the boy in obvious agitation before crinkling her nose. Take a bath first before you want to be in charge of anything stinky. You smell like wet dog and mud put together. The class laughed loudly to this insult causing the boy to become quite embarrassed. He started to growl slightly and pointed towards Esumi. Put your money where your mouth is and step up. I'm not like that loser you scared earlier. The arrogant boy challenged. To this response Esumi stood up and stared at the boy with a cold glare. Suddenly it felt like the classroom's temperature sudden chilled and lowered while Esumi was slowly pulling out her sheathed blade. The boy's dog started to shiver and whimper and also to a smaller extent the boy himself, except for the whimpering part. 
As things were heating up suddenly the teacher walked in with another man. The teacher noticed the silence and looked towards the back. Esumi quickly reigned in her leaking killing intent and sat down and took on an innocent and dainty appearance. Everyone to their seats. Class is about to begin. My name is Aruka. You will call me Aruka Sensei. This man to the right is Mizuki. You will also call him Mizuki Sensei. He will be in charge of your physical aspects of being a shinobi. I will be in charge of your mental aspects of being a shinobi for the most part. One boring class period later. I told you Jabi. Nothing but boring old history and school rules. Esumi gloated towards Jabi. I can't believe they would do something so uninteresting. Are they trying to make us fall asleep during class? Jabi angrily says while thinking about the pointless history lesson and rules they learned instead of something that would be actually interesting to learn about. Oh and the fact that he has to pay for an expensive sword. Ha 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 make sure to get Kodama blade. Esumi told Jabi as they were walking towards the weapons shop. As the three, demons, walked into the weapons shop Brawley went up to the shopkeeper. Where are the weights in this shop? Brawley asks with a blank look on his face. They're in the back kid, but why do you want them? The shopkeeper asks, for training purposes. Aren't you kids just academy students? Why would you need weights at your age? Shouldn't you be studying at the library or buying books instead? The shopkeeper questions. Mind your business old man. Just tell me if I can get them here or not. Brawley says with slight irritation. Well I can't sell weights to academy students. If you brats graduate and become genins then sure I'll be able to get you some weights. Mister are you sure you won't be able to sell us any weights? We promise not to hurt ourselves. Esumi says in a precious sweet voice along with Jabi giving puppy eyes with her. Sorry kiddos, even if you were 10 times cuter than you already are I still wouldn't sell you some weights. If I got caught selling weights to academy students my store would be shut down faster than someone spitting in the Hokage's face. The shopkeeper explains, you useless old man, if I knew you were just gonna waste our time, I wouldn't even try to do something so demeaning. Esumi berates, now hold on you little snot sucking brats, I got a deal for you. I came across a merchant that said he was from Uzushiogakur and I had a hard time believing him due to their whole island being destroyed and none of the Uzumakis being spared from what I heard. He wanted to sell me something called gravity seals. He said it was a type of seal that you put on your stomach and it increases the resistance your body faces and if you surge your chakra through it, it will increase the level of resistance you face. That got me thinking that shinobis would love to kill themselves to get stronger, what better way to gain money than to help idiots kill themselves. But the deal breaker is that it hasn't been field tested yet. If you brats really want something to train with that are similar to weights try this. And if it works come back and tell me and next time you want some you can have it for free. Deal. Give me three seals and we'll be back at the end of the week. Brawley says. Esumi and Jabi took a gulp in fear of what could possibly be going through Brawley's mind, but they weren't surprised at all. The three years of training with Brawley told them he was a training freak and they didn't see what could ever stop him from trying to get stronger. The only time they were able to take a break from training with Brawley was when they got sick and couldn't physically move from their beds at the orphanage. The sad part about when someone got sick was that the training for the person that wasn't sick was twice as hard than if they were together with Brawley. Brawley and his two slaves got the gravity seals and started walking towards the forest of death as they did every day. Only Jennings and Up were allowed at the training grounds, but Brawley and friends found out that no one really watches the training ground 44, Forest of Death. The three children walked into a clearing inside the forest and Brawley handed out two seals to Jabi and Esumi. I'm going to test the gravity seal first. My body is stronger than both of yours and is way more resilient. So if anything goes wrong, I'll be able to make sure I don't have to find two more slaves to replace you two. Brawley explains in the nicest way he can. This sentence also caused Jabi and Esumi to smile slightly as they understood that Aomatsuna was worried about them and didn't want them to be hurt due to his decisions. Brawley placed one gravity seal on his muscular eight-year-old bicep and surged chakra through the seal. No change was noticed by Jabi and Esumi. Brawley surged his chakra through the seal two more times and started to grin. The seal made Brawley feel like he was wading through water and unable to completely use his body like he's used to. This will be a great tool for me to become even stronger. It works, but the first change I felt was too tiny to be considered worth anything. I'm going to wear it for the next 24 hours to make sure there aren't any side effects for wearing it. You two start training, start off with a light spar to warm up and then we'll really start training. Brawley said. 
Jabi took out some gloves made out of blade-resistant material while Esumi slowly unsheathed her katana. They both stared at each other with no hint of even thinking about hesitating while Brawly was watching. Last time Brawly caught them holding back without trying to viciously maim each other was the last time they decided they wanted to be in the hospital for, wasting your master's time and good grace. From that day forth, they both never held back against each other while sparring in Brawly's presence. Jabi slowly walked towards Esumi while watching her closely like a hawk for any signs of movement. Jabi has learned dearly that Esumi can get to him by the time he blinks his eye, and even then that isn't good enough. He has to move his body along with catching her movements at the same time. If his body can't react to his senses then it's entirely pointless. Esumi grins at Jabi to try and unnerve him and possibly distract him. She knows that he learned how she battles and moves through a very long streak of losses that have started to slow down and bite her in the ass with losses of her own now. If she doesn't take this spar as carefully and seriously as he is she will be tossed or pounded into the ground once more. Esumi tosses her sheath towards Jabi in a high-speed manner and quickly closes the distance behind it with her blade held behind her back. Jabi merely palmed the sheath back towards Esumi with enough force to send it flying back towards her twice as fast. Esumi's eyes widen in surprise briefly, but quickly came back to her sense and dodged the insanely fast sheath and slashed upward towards Jabi round gut. Jabi calmly dove his fist towards the blade coming from underneath him. Esumi somehow felt that her blade wouldn't be able to take this strike from one of her best friends and quickly abandoned the strike and pulled back her blade to thrust towards the now open chest of her friend. Jabi moved with his thrown punch and flipped over and kicked towards the thrusting sword with the type of agility and flexibility you would not normally see from someone of his physique. Esumi swore in her mind and ducked under the kick and slashed upwards towards his inner thigh. Jabi started to sweat a bit and used his other leg to deflect the incoming blade by kicking it to the side and quickly recovering back on his two feet and got into a defensive stance. Esumi also rolled and recovered. They both were breathing heavily staring each other down like bitter enemies until a clap was heard. Enough. That was a decent warm-up. Jabi that counter you attempted when she attempted to stab you through your chest was not bad, but you shouldn't leave yourself open like that against a faster opponent. If Esumi was even faster than she is now she would have easily been able to pierce through your back. That counter attack would have been fine against someone of lesser speed than Esumi. Esumi you simply need to work on your speed and techniques. Brawly explained. Brawly looked towards the forest and seemed to be thinking about something. Esumi and Jabi secretly started to sweat more about what could Aomatsuna possibly be thinking about. We're gonna have to cut today's training short. Since we're academy students we can officially start learning E-ranked jutsus from the library. We'll head there tomorrow and copy them down to train with here. If there are no side effects for me with the seal tomorrow we can also get you two to start wearing them then. Brawly then started to smile about how much progress he will be able to make from now on in strength. Inadvertently causing both of his friends to shiver at his face and leaking battle spirit. Brawly started to walk out of the forest of death with Esumi and Jabi behind him on each side breathing slightly hard. They started walking towards their new apartment they acquired when they became academy students. Brawly and Jabi live in one room while Esumi lives in a room next door to them. They each went into their rooms and fell asleep. Esumi and Jabi slightly fearing about tomorrow's training plan, and Brawly going to sleep immediately to start the day off tomorrow as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode be sure to let me know by subscribing and liking the video.